Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing. Yeah. Welcome to the uh, synagogue. <laughs> this could be my last service. So, Rick will be here every Friday if things don't go well for me. Possibly Robert. <clears throat> so, I'm going to whittle through this thing and hopefully <laughs> I don't get myself in too much trouble. All right, thank you. Welcome to the service tonight. Tonight is uh, synagogue night. And uh, YouTubers, thank you for showing up. And I'm going to do the announcements tonight because we've got a lot of material to go through and uh, I got to get going. Uh, we'll hold the questions on the seminar to the end. This is our seminar night. And then uh, at the end of the seminar, we'll remember your question and we'll go through it. See if we see if we can clarify it, okay? All right, let's get going. The next seminar is uh, February 22nd. I don't want to think about that now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I expanded my radio ministry. I'm on uh, every day of the week now. And that's been going really well. Grateful for that. I'm also uh, on the internet. Uh, on the website, you can catch the uh, radio shows 24-7. Uh, see, that may be the wrong. It could be dot com. It's not supposed to be on. Hey, is Ron in there? Yeah. Was it dot com I was supposed to take off? Yeah, there's no dot com there. I apologize for that. Omni.fm is what I should have put there. I'll fix it next week. Apologize for that. Get the radio programs 24 7 off the website. I also expanded my uh, internet radio ministry. I'm getting uh, over 2,000 listeners per night, uh, seven nights a week. I have Sunday nights there. That's a mistake, too. I went seven nights a week. <laughs> And uh, hopefully we'll be hiring someone here soon who knows what they're doing. Let's go to this one. If you'd like to help donate to the ministry, you can uh, put in our ministry name under smileamazon.com. And when you buy something, they'll donate to our ministry for free. So does Good Search if you switch over from Google. If you put in your Hardcore Christianity at Fry's Food Store when you shop there, uh, they will also donate to our ministry for free. Okay? But they uh, will uh, bless nonprofit organizations. So if you go there, sign us up. And every time you shop there, if you shop there, I shop there. And uh, they will donate to us too. Okay. Here are our YouTube uh, teaching channels. And uh, tonight's teaching will be on number one, House of Healing AZ. YouTubers, don't forget about self-deliverance at home and setting up a uh, terror cell in your church to start picking off the uh, sick people. If you send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, I'll send you the self-deliverance list. And uh, you only need two or three people to open up a terror cell in your church. And uh, kind of secretly go around praying for people and getting them healed and delivered. Amen. You keep doing that until you get caught. After you're caught, you're out the dope. And uh, that's God telling you, I'm expanding your ministry. Rejection is never negative. It's always a promotion. So if somebody tells you to go suck on these eggs, you thank them for it and head on out the dope and start sucking. Here we go. Donation boxes are on the doors there. Thank you for your donations. We had a wonderful year last year, thanks to you. We're going to have a better year this year. You can also donate on the website. I wrote three books there in the bookstore. One on Satan, one on healing, and one on mental illness. Our healing rooms are booming, and we have had so many people come. We're going to adjust this thing to be able to get to everybody. I think we came up with a new idea. We're going to try it next Thursday. Uh, this thing's really gotten more response than I thought it was going to have twice as much actually so uh, we're going to change it a little Thursday next Thursday and uh, see how that goes we want to be able to get to everybody yeah all right <clears throat> now 
Christianity is a funny religion. Uh, it started out super powered. In the first century, it was amazing. Uh, it was a simple presentation of the gospel, which always works best. The devil saw that, and he saw that if you present Christ in simple terms, and the anointing's there, and the Holy Spirit moves, he can't stop it, and he gets his face kicked in every single time. So what he had to do was, over the centuries, uh, he had to dumb down Christianity. He had to water it down. He had to contaminate it. And he's done that with, here in America, over the last 60 years. He got rid of deliverance and much of healing and just kind of stuck with salvation. And most of the churches are uh, good with salvation, but uh, not good with healing and terrible with deliverance. In order to fix that, uh, many years ago, uh, back in the 70s, churches, Protestant churches, started to become seeker-friendly facilities. So the idea was, if you're not going to have the power of the Spirit in your church or your denomination, you have to make the church system appeal to people so they'll want to come. And so they developed this new system of kind of entertainment uh, to get people to come in the door. Because the early church was based on the moving of the Spirit. And if you take the, the moving of the Spirit out of Christianity, it becomes as dead and dry as all the other religions. Okay? So the same thing has happened with Judaism. You know, 50 years ago, Jews for Jesus and other different groups started to crop up. And the Jews started getting saved, you know, which is great. We want, we want them to get saved. And then they started to try to save other Jews, which is fantastic. Great. And they took a kind of a page out of the Protestant books. When the moving of the Spirit wasn't there, they had to kind of make Christianity more appealing for Jews. Like we make Christianity more appearing, appealing for Gentiles, so to speak, by making it more entertainment and seeker friendly oriented. They switched over to making it more Jewish. So that when you, as a Messianic Jew, go to a Jew and ask them, would you like to get saved and born again and follow Yeshua? And listen, here's the good news. You can keep most of your Jewish stuff if you come over here. In the early church, it was the opposite. The apostles were all Jews. They were all Messianic Jews. But their approach to other Jews was completely different. They would come in, reason through the scriptures that Jesus Christ was the Moshiach or the Messiah. And this group of people believed it. And this group didn't believe it. Uh, these became followers of Christ and these became persecutors. It was either or. The group that believed did so because the moving of the Spirit convinced them that Jesus was the Moshiach. In America, on the Protestant end, the Holy Spirit had to start coming up with revivals. Since the church dumbed itself down and became seeker-friendly and has basically been a failure, the Holy Spirit you know, chips his way in and he comes up with a revival. Every time there's a revival, the devil senses it coming and he sets up a defensive posture. So when a revival hits, bang, uh, a massive infiltration of demons heads toward the revival while the Holy Ghost is moving they try to infiltrate the system and lead people astray for example the, the Toronto blessing boom big move of the Holy Ghost Phew, massive infiltration of familiar spirits then there was this mix yeah. 
Then Azusa Street years ago, massive move of the Holy Ghost, massive infill infestation of familiar spirit. Uh, the devil quashed that thing in about a year. Then you had the Pensacola, and then you had the Topeka, and then you had different, all these different revivals, they kind of go uh, like a lightning strike in California. Boom! A fire starts. And the fire is only this big when it starts, and then it starts spreading like crazy, and then the devil sends in firemen, so to speak, and they put the fire out. All revivals start like that. Boom! It starts, and bang! Within months, years, what have you, the devil shuts it down. He does it through infiltrators. He sends spirits in that impersonate the Holy Spirit. They deceive people and they trick them. And that pattern that I just explained to you is the overall master plan of Satan. It's in Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon, where what he does is he takes all the church of major religions, he gets them to de-emphasize their differences, accentuate their agreeance, and he's getting them to kind of blend together. Christianity, Islam, Chrislam, Messianic Judaism, Judaism, blend. See? You want to get saved and follow Yeshua? Well, I'm not sure. Hey, listen. We wear prayer shawls, hats. We keep the feast. We keep the festivals. We do all these Jewish things. You would be very comfortable over here as a Christian Jew. Christianity, hey, you, you want to get saved? Well, I don't know. Well, hey, well, come here. Hillsong, we got the naked cowboy, laser light show, Jesus on a trapeze, party on. You'll like it here. Is this making any sense? I may not have explained it right. <clears throat> Anyhow, it's a satanic trick to get all the religions, major religions, to click to Mystery Babylon, and down the road, the Antichrist moves in and takes it over. He can't take it over if they're all separated. So in the beginning, the devil separated everybody, so no one would fight him in unity. So you had all these different church denominations. You had Catholicism split to Orthodox, then that split to Protestants. And then all the Protestant churches said, hey, we're not going to work with you because we believe this and you don't. And so he split all them up. And you can't fight if everybody's not in unity. And that's how Christianity got gassed here in America. You had too many different denominations all going their own way. And in the early church in the first century, you had a unified front. You preached the simplicity of Christ. You gave these scriptures documenting Jesus was the Messiah. If you didn't like it, nobody gave you a seeker-friendly message to keep you in. You were out, and these people came in because the Holy Ghost proved Jesus was the Messiah. If you don't have the Holy Spirit moving in your denomination, your church, or what have you, it just becomes like another religion. So if you don't have the Holy Ghost moving, you've got to put on a massive show to entertain or make the people feel comfortable so they'll come back. The churches that are not doing that, Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopals, Brethren, Amish, but to go down the list, they're all fading away. Uh, attendance is dropping like that in all these different denominations because they're not catching on. They don't get it. You've got to make people feel good. You've got to entertain them. You've got to crank up the music. You need pop stars, all that. Ugh. I'm nervous. <laughs> all right. Uh, Messianic Jews are great people. I, I know I know all kinds of Messianic Jews. They care, they're good people, they're saved, they believe in the Spirit. But the devil tricked them like he did the Protestants to blend. 
the Antichrist gets Israel in the end mystery Babylon They all go together. They all join up together In a one world kind of a religious Unification that's where we're headed That's what's going to happen All right, so let's take a close look at it the Word of God Peter James and the others and the law of Moses. Did you know that? Okay, here's Acts chapter 14 when they gathered the church together They rehearsed all that God had done with them Over three years. This was the end of Paul's first missionary journey and it lasted three years and it was awesome They had all kinds of churches start and again the real gospel is always Blatant presentation of the word the moving of the spirit Healings deliverances of salvation naturally follow If you don't have the moving of the spirit the whole thing is labored the whole thing's hard The first church that was their system you preached a hard met uncompromising message If you didn't like it you were out if you did like it, you got filled with the Holy Ghost, healings, deliverances, all kinds of stuff happened. And that's how the church grew so fast. It's the Holy Ghost. He's the head, head honcho. He's the centerpiece of Christianity. He's the executor of Jesus' estate. He's the, God, he's the boss. If you work him out, then your, your church is doomed to being seeker-friendly. Or fading out like Lutherans and Messi within a few years those churches won't even exist anymore or they'll be overrun with gays they're switching over to inclusion of homosexuality and whenever you include homosexuality that spreads like wildfire so the Methodists and the Lutherans and some of the others they'll probably end up uh, worship centers mostly for gays I'm talking about down the road not now well, what happened was Paul said hey look at all these great things that have happened with the Gentiles how he opened the doors of faith to the ethnos the nations and They stayed a long time with the disciples. Well Certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren and they said Except you be circumcised after the law of Moses. You cannot be saved. Who were these people? They were Messianic Jews. How do you know that? Okay, let's check it out. Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension or disputation with them. What was it? What's what's the point of all that? They said no. No, you do not have to be circumcised to be a born again Christian. Okay, that's heresy Well, they said wait a minute. This is a controversial subject. You need to go to Jerusalem and straighten it out with the Apostles Okay, so Acts 15 when they came to Jerusalem They went to the elders and the Apostles and They told them the same thing. Hey all these things happened among the Gentiles ethnos the nations in God's eyes there was only two nations there was the nation of Israel and then there was everybody else The nation of Israel was God's chosen people the rest of them were The King James we will call them Gentiles It's actually mean the nations Okay, so All these people were getting the Holy Spirit. They were getting healed. They were getting born again. It was incredible And it says there rose up certain sect of the Pharisees who believed they are who? Who are these people? Messianic Jews born-again Christian Jews Correct. They were believers it says it right there Saying that you had to be circumcised and to keep the law of Moses as a born-again Christian Well, the apostles and elders came together to consider the matter When they had disputed much Peter stood up and he tells them the story of when he had converted the family of Cornelius Remember that story? He was quite stunned when it happened. 
and he says, I uh, led the Gentiles first to the gospel and believing. And God knows the hearts. He bore them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost as he did us. If you have a synagogue of Jews, Christians, or a Protestant church of Christians, or a Catholic mass, and there is no moving of the Spirit, that's a red flag. Something is wrong. The normal pattern in Scripture is preaching God's Word without apologizing for it, allowing the Holy Spirit to move. These people respond. These people don't. The witness that you're in the right religion, to use a slang term, is the Holy Ghost. He's the man. And then it says he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith, having nothing to do with the law of Moses. Correct? Where's the boasting then in Romans 3? It is excluded. Why? By what law? The law of works? No, the law of faith. We were for 400 and something years in the law of Moses. Then the system switched over to the law of faith. Okay. And then in the millennium, what happens? It kicks back. The dispensation of grace ends. It's over. The millennium starts. Click. The nation of Israel restored. That's restored. Festivals, speech, Sabbath. You people, you people reading your Bibles, right? You're not. This isn't the Book of the Mormon thing. Yeah, Book of the Mormon. Yeah, there were Jews here before the Indians were here. Yeah, got that one. Thank you, Joseph. This is the law of faith. Acts 15 again. So after they discussed all this, they went through the whole system. They sent a message out to all these Gentile Christians. And they said what? Acts 15.10. Why tempt God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers or we were able to bear? What does that mean? The law for over 400 years was holy and just. The purpose of the law was to show you that you can't save yourself. There is no way you can keep the law. There is no way you can be perfect. It is impossible. As Paul mentioned in Romans, the law was a schoolmaster to drive you to Christ. The law had a specific perfect purpose for a temporary period of time to show you that you need mercy. You need grace. You can't make it. You're not going to make it. You're not good enough. You're not holy enough. Well, I'm not coming back here. Brother Mike's insulting people. Listen. Spiritually, you suck. <laughs> what you need is not a bunch of laws to keep that you can't keep. You don't need another diet you can't stay on. You need grace. The law was set up, as Paul said, as a teacher showing you now listen you're you can't keep that you need mercy leave here and go there is this making sense <clears throat> well it was a yoke that no one was able to bear translation they couldn't keep the law the Jews were always backsliding they were always violating the law 
They're still doing it Jews. They're stubborn and stiff-necked people They don't listen Some of you have a little Jew in you We'll fix that later tonight We believe that through the grace of Jesus Christ we They're talking about we them we shall be so delivered just like they were the Gentiles then all the multitude kept silent they gave audience to Barnabas and Paul after Peter spoke and he went through his first missionary journey all these incredible miracles happened and none of these people had anything to do with the law of Moses you with me so then after they held their peace James stands up I guess he was the first pope. Men and brethren, listen to me. He sounds like a preacher. Peter has declared how God at the first visited the nations to take them out a people for God's name. And it says here, to this agree the words of the prophets. This is from Amos 9. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. I will build again the ruins and I will set it up. Amos 9. What's he saying here? From the very beginning, God, when he set up the law, also prophesied that the whole planet Earth would get a chance to be saved. The gospel went to the Jews first, then the Gentiles. They threw Paul out of a synagogue one time. He says, all right, I'm going to kick the dust off my feet. You don't want the gospel? I'll take it to the Gentiles. They will receive it. That's what he said. And it was that was God's plan from day one. See? When that happened, it was about Genesis 3 or so. The devil heard that prophecy about him getting his face kicked in and his head crushed. If somebody told me I was getting my face kicked in and my head crushed, I'd listen to that prophecy too. Somehow in his mind, I don't exactly know what happened, he kind of figured something was coming through humanity to get him. So what he did was, the theory is, he got all these other angels who had some kind of a supernatural ability to get female humans pregnant, and he started to try to pollute the human race. That's the theory. And so the, these women gave birth to these ugly uh, Goliath-type beings, Nephilims and all that kind of stuff there. And then God got rid of them in the flood. And then it happened again after the flood. And then King David, killed, I guess, killed them all off or something. But what was going on here? God said the nations, the Gentiles, were going to be saved too. That was his original plan. Adam killed everybody and then Jehovah said I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to be saved Jew or Gentile and back then of course there were no Jews Okay, Acts 15 The residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles Upon whom my name is called says the Lord that was the prophecy we were all predicted given up get an opportunity to be saved all of us who are non-jews gospel went to the jews first then it went to the nations right yeah known to god are all his works from the beginning of the age i own my sentence is this james says we do not trouble the gentiles who have turned to God that we write to them to abstain from one pollutions of idols two, fornication three animals that are strangled four drinking their blood they didn't need to tell me twice on that <laughs> what's that all involving it's idol worship it was all involving idol worship that was it Nothing was mentioned about the law of Moses. Not one thing, even circumcision, Passover, Sabbath, nothing was mentioned. 
This is all they told him to do. Well, they sent that letter around. It says Moses of old time has in every city those who preach him in the synagogues every Sabbath. Okay. For as much as we have heard that certain went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls. Okay, that's kind of a nasty verse. If I come to you and give you a bunch of law of Moses stuff, feasts, tabernacles, meanings, <coughs> prayer shawls, whatever it is, I'm subverting your soul. <coughs> it's a false doc. Why? Because they only told him four things. There was only four things the Gentiles had to focus on as all related to idolatry. Saying that you must be circumcised and keep the law To whom we gave no such commandment okay. Don't don't get mad at me. I'm just reading it It seemed good to us and the Holy Ghost To lay upon you No greater burden than these necessary things that were for them. That was it It was all related to idolatry. What did Peter do? Well, he did good for a while, but guess what he did? <laughs> Turned into an American Christian. When Peter came to Antioch, Paul said, this is in Galatians chapter 2, I stood him to his face. He was, he was wrong. Before that, certain people came from James, and so he ate with the Gentiles he had dinner with them But when the Jews came messianic Jews he withdrew and separated himself fearing those of the circumcision What is that yeah In God's kingdom, there's no Jews or Greeks. There's no bonds or free and there's no males or females you are all one in Christ if you're Prejudiced against this group That's a sin You can't be a racist and be a born-again Christian that's impossible Because God doesn't see a race. He looks in the inner man man looks on the outlook God sees the inner man And there's no race in the inner man if you went to heaven right now You couldn't tell who what race was what you'd never know that's just something here This is it there's blacks and white it does none of that stuff's in heaven and Spiritually none of it's here There's no difference between Males or females Ma males are not superior to females. They're all one in Christ But Peter said no wait a minute. I can't hang around I can't let these messianic Jews see me eat dinner with Gentiles, I'm gonna get in trouble. So Paul called him on it because he was afraid. Yeah, that's the number one problem with religion. It generates fear because it causes you, requires you to do certain things. If you don't do every little thing, I screwed up. The other Jews <coughs> fell for it too. He said, Galatians two. Even Barnabas who was a powerful Holy Ghost preacher He got carried away with their hypocrisy. What's that Greek word mean? That's exactly right. It's where we get our English word Hypocrisy Barnabas a super powered Holy Ghost faith healer got sucked in through what? <coughs> Fear Fear can take it take down any preacher no matter how powerful they are if you let fear in you will go down It don't matter who you are You could be a wigglesworth you're gonna crash That's the devil's greatest weapon fear and Paul called Barnabas on it and it says when I saw that they 
did not walk uprightly according to the truth of the gospel I said to Peter in front of everybody if you being a Jew live after the manner of the nations and not as the Jews why do you compel the nations to live as the Jews? Good question. <laughs> Paul always got to the point. That's what I liked about him. We Jews by nature and not sinners like the nations, knowing that a man is not justified by works. <clears throat> this system, 400 and something years, required you to measure up to over 600 different laws. Nobody could do it. So what happened was, the ancient rabbis uh, created what they called the Talmud, where the rabbis sat around like the Supreme Court, and they took God's law and they reinterpreted it so that it would apply better to your life. Jesus came to them and said, hey, you guys are frauds. You took God's word and then you changed it and dumbed it down to now it's a sin. He said, you took the word of God, thou shalt not dishonor thy mother or thy father, and you dumbed it down, telling them, oh, if I go to the synagogue, and give God an offering on behalf of my parents, I can stop helping my parents. So Jesus said, you made the word of God of no effect because of your traditions. We call it the Talmud. And to this day in Israel, the, the Orthodox Jews, they interpret all these things and apply them to everyday life. And in defense of them, yeah, it's kind of confusing. I mean, that was 3,000 years ago. This is the 21st century. Everything's changed. And how you live your life has completely changed. Mm -hmm. So you go down the law and you nitpick every little thing. What does rest mean? What does work mean? So these rabbis had to interpret all these things. So you would feel comfortable. The devil is always taking God's word Mixing it down a little bit so you're comfortable. And that's why Christianity is such a failure. Christians don't like to get out of their comfort zone. They like to stay here in their comfort cocoon. Like Wilford Brimley. We have believed in Christ that we might be justified by faith. Law was... Holy and just for a temporary period of time, and then when John the Baptist showed up, the dispensation of grace kicked in. What's the foundation of the dispensation of grace? It's repentance. John the Baptist was the nastiest, filthiest preacher that ever lived. He preached 31 <laughs> different doctrines. Almost all of them were repentance based. People don't understand, greasy grace is different than grace. Greasy grace is American churches where you're allowed to do everything and everything slips and slides. It's all good. John the Baptist laid the foundation for the dispensation of grace, which was requiring repentance, changing your behavior, your attitude, your life, making restitution, stop sinning. What? Oh my God, you're going to stop sinning? What are you, nuts? <laughs> grace requires people to repent. There isn't any way to get grace without repentance. In our society, it's, Amen. as Grandpa said, it's bass backwards. You just come in, oh, we're getting Jesus, party on, dude. No, wait a minute, huh? That's not how you get saved. Okay? You got to have conviction of the Holy Spirit to get saved. You, you got to be willing to change your life when you get saved. It's a it's a life changing event. It's not a casual mental thing. Ray Comfort in California calls them false converts. People that are casually won to Christ later on become casual backsliders. Yeah. Amen. It's better to preach a harder message out the gate and get a smaller response. But the 
group you get will last much longer Those are the ones that could become disciples if you just let everybody in With a watered-down message everybody will eventually leave with a watered-down message The gospel wasn't meant to be watered down It doesn't work That's not the gospel. That's another gospel Paul talked about to the Corinthians By the works of the law no one could be Dikaio declared innocent by God Under the old system every year we had the National Day of Atonement. In Hebrew, that means to cover it. Cover it up, see? So you spent the whole year sinning, screwing up, <laughs> like an American Christian. And then once a year, Aaron would go into the Holy of Holies. Mercy seat was in there. And God would cover up your sin for another year. Here, in the gospel your sins are eviscerated and no longer exist as if you had never committed a sin the difference between the blood of bulls and goats and the precious blood of Christ Amen. so now these people never were Sinless now you are sinless Paul said in Hebrews that there's no point in making an offering for sin where there's no sin He explains from Hebrews 4 to Hebrews 10 he lays it out perfectly They had to have continual offerings Sin often they have a total of it Here the blood of Jesus was offered once and you obtained eternal salvation Through that blood so there's no point in having any other offerings None are needed for you That should have landed better I'm discouraged now <laughs> Nobody can be justified or declared innocent by God by doing good things To him as it says in the Old Testament, they're the same as used tampons <laughs> Filthy rags in Isaiah is in Hebrew used menstrual rags My righteousness is a used tampon Compared to God's holy righteousness And I can't go to heaven unless I have God's holy righteousness not a stinking dripping tampon So I have to have the righteousness of God in Christ and I got to get it imputed to me Which means my works are out the door Where'd that come from? Nobody is justified by works. It's impossible Paul said Did you know the law of Moses is abolished, okay second Corinthians chapter 3 For God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter but of the Spirit What happened to Christianity in America if you move the Holy Ghost out? It just becomes like any other crappy religion. It's just people going there pleasing their own conscience. They're just placating themselves. Well, I went to church. I go to church. I went to mass. Your works, nobody cares what you did. And what you did is useless. Absolutely work. Your righteousness comes from the blood. Not you going to church or feeding people or wearing an outfit putting on a beanie wearing a prayer shirt. doesn't work 
So you may dress like a lot of you do you may dress great like I do it doesn't matter Yeah, I look fantastic. It's not gonna help me I'm dead in the water why wearing something it's nothing to do with your soul Anybody can wear something I could come in here dressed as an Orthodox priest That would shake you up wouldn't it? Yes, it would giant cone head Blasting neck thing huge robe. I'd float in like a flying nun You say my god that guy's holy Why well, could it just come off porn five minutes ago? You don't know What you wear has got nothing to do with who you are? Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about that See the spirit gives life the letter Kill. Amen. First Corinthians three. There it is. Second Corinthians. If the if the diaconia ministry of death, the law. What was the law good for? Showing me, I was going to die. Oh, that's so happy, brother Mike. You're just cheering me up. The law shows you. But you cannot save yourself and you're going to die and there's nothing you can do about it Hallelujah. That was the purpose of it yeah. It ministered death to people hey you sinned you sinned you sinned you sinned. the soul that sin it it shall die you're done What's he talking about now here a grave in stones the Ten Commandments? So the children of Israel Looked at Moses coming down the mountain and what was going on with his face His face was partying it was blowing that kabod the glory of God and It was so bright Like it was from heaven the throne room that they couldn't even look at him it says they had to duck like that. Oh my gosh Moses was on the mountain. He got the Ten Commandments The law was glorious perfect and holy but That wasn't the purpose of it It says The glory of the law was to be what? What is catargeo mean? Well, it means <laughs> To wipe something out. Few people have that skill. <laughs> if I catch or gale something, I destroy it, I wipe it out, I ruin it. What are you talking about here? This is blasphemy. No, it isn't. The law of God, the Bible says, is holy and pure. See? The law, Paul said in Romans, manifested. And when it did, I died. Clunk. For without the law, I didn't know I was transgressing. But when the law told me, hey, dude, keep your pants on. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Keep your pants up. I didn't know that until I heard God tell me that. Then Paul said, Oh my God, I'm dead in the water. See, Paul was a Pharisee, which was similar to a TV preacher. <laughs> they got everything. They got the best seats everywhere. They got the hottest chicks. They got all the money. They got the cars. They got all the girls. You don't get it, do you? Nothing's changed. People don't change. He was an honored member of society. If he went out somewhere, he sat in the front row. He wasn't like Bob Euchre sitting up there. He sat right there. Until the law caught him. Hey, you've got pride. 
you got arrogance. You're greedy. You're an adulterer And he said holy shoot I'm dead in the water That was the purpose of the law to get you to see you can't save yourself The glory of the law he said was going to be destroyed It's a bold statement coming from a Pharisee Jew second Corinthians 3 shall not the ministry of the spirit be more glorious <laughs> oh boy. The law couldn't get you saved and couldn't get you filled with the Holy Ghost right. it only could tell you you're screwed <laughs> What do he say? I'm paraphrasing, honey. Calm yourself down. The law only pointed out I was dead in the water. Pure of heart. Yeah, the law pointed out that you were not pure in your heart. Thank you. All y'all. I mean, I was, but you guys. Just pitiful. Pitiful. <laughs> What did it say? The Holy Ghost living in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, is more glorious right there, right now, than the entire law of God. That's blasphemy. No, I'm reading it. The ministry of the Spirit is far more glorious than the glory of the law that was so bright and glorious and great they couldn't even look at Moses. If the ministry of Catachrisis, judgment, is glory, the law was set up by God to show you that you are a hopeless sinner and as a result of your sin, you're going to go to hell and face judgment from God. Party on with the law. Can't wait to hear a little more of that. Okay. The law would never fly here in America. Too many insecure people. Oh boy. They all call me for counseling. The law was set up by God for a specific purpose. What was it? His future revelation. It started with an old woman whose womb had dried up like a prune. Her name was Elizabeth. Her husband didn't believe any of it, so he got stuck dumb. No, his IQ was fine. It was an old English term referring to couldn't talk anymore. Well, this baby laying in this old woman's womb started growing like crazy, and everybody was so happy. Well, Mary, Maria, comes to visit her. Some people think they were related. They might have been. She walks in the door and the baby jumps in the womb filled with the law of God. No! John the Baptist got a Holy Ghost revival in the womb. In New York, John the Baptist would have been sucked out and cut up. Portions now up to five minutes to delivery. Unbelievable infanticide. Listen, if the law said, hey, you're a sinner and you're getting judged, and that was full of God's glory, how much more glorious are you sitting there with the Holy Ghost in there? The law couldn't save you, it couldn't give you the Holy Ghost. Nobody had the Holy Ghost then. The Spirit of God would come upon them and they would do great things, then He would leave them. You carry Him with you. Why? You are not under the law. You did not get saved by your good works. You ran to the cross of Calvary. You begged for mercy. The Holy Ghost heard you, He brought it to you. Then the devil came back and said, Oh, you got to do this and wear that and go eat there and eat that. No. That's subverting your soul. We don't subvert souls here. You don't do it there either. Much more does the 
ministry of righteousness exceed that glory the law He's not trashing the law. Don't you see that? He's saying it's glorious. It's beautiful. It's perfect and it was I was imperfect So when the law came I died In other words, holy crap, they caught me I've been caught and I can't get out of it. There's nothing I can do. Somebody else has got to do it for me. What do I need? The schoolmaster, the law, to drive me to Jesus. See, when you run and cling to the old rugged cross, oh, you're in line for miraculous mercy. You want to do it on your own? Welcome to judgment and a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. You want to trust your own righteousness? You have zero chance of making it none No offense Chapter 3 that made more glorious Had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels. Oh good Lord Translation the Holy Ghost living in you is so glorious the law has no glory anymore none this is blasphemy. No, he's comparing glories. The Son of Man was Lord of the Sabbath. He created the law and it was spectacular in glory. Now it's useless and nothing compared to what? The Holy Ghost glory hanging around in there. Okay, let's let me reveal a little secret here. This is supposed to be kind of encouraging. <laughs> that glory, Moses' glory, phew, that was a great move. Oh, yeah, he'd have been on every game show, every news channel. Check this out boom, God's glory right out of your face. Ah, the Holy Ghost in you makes that look dead. No glory compared to this new glory. Oh, this is crazy preaching. I didn't know this was in the Bible, Brother Mike. Hey, it's my job to give it to you. If that which is done away, what? Catargeo, wiped out, eviscerated, dumped, booted out, thrown out. How much more the one that remains is more glory. Wow, this was done away with. Why? It's not needed anymore. You have been justified by faith. You have the perfection the law could not give you. It wasn't designed to give you perfection. It was set up to show you that you are a genetic failure. Give yourself a... Yeah, there you go. You're a failure. You, everyone, oh, you, oh, y'all, failures. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah, good, good. If you're a failure and you know it, you're way ahead of religious people. That means you run to the cross of Calvary. You cling to the old rugged cross. Why? Because by God, you can't be out on your own. Judgment and hell. How do I know that? The law spelled it out in detail. I'm done there. So I ran to Calvary. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why Jesus said people are pressing into the kingdom of God. Why? They wanted to get out of the law and crash through grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very similar to divorcing a critical person. Don't raise your hands, but you ever been married to a critical person somebody that found all kinds of faults in you don't raise your hand <laughs> Have you ever had that and then then you finally get away from that person This is how it works in the secular world you finally get away from that person and then you Meet somebody else who thinks you're wonderful You can't even believe it 
<laughs> you got rid of the other spouse who actually knows what you're like and you've got this other one coming in who's ignorant <laughs> oh yeah yeah I'm great oh I'm sweet and kind oh you lost some weight you put on some new dress oh you look good girl yeah what do you think it is the divorce is here laws we're divorced. Oh, I'm married to mercy. Golly. Drug addicts condemned to hell. Mercy delivered, healed. The Bible's good preaching. Ephesians chapter 2. Jesus is our peace. Who did what? He made both of us, both of them one. Jews, nations. How did he do that? He tore down the middle wall of partition between the two. He broke down the division between us. He abolished, same Greek word, katrageo, wiped out, destroyed in his flesh the extra hostility. What hostility? That hostility. The law. The law was not fun. See? Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do that. You got to do this and do that, and then you got to do this, and then you got to do that. And if you don't do it, you're screwed. I ran to mercy over here. So now when I fail, I ask for forgiveness. Boom, it's gone. I'm back up ready to go again. The law was set up as a temporary system to lead you to grace. Not greasy grace. Grace is founded on John the Baptist. Repentance. Jesus preached the same message. It's not greasy grace. That doesn't work. That brings in demons. The law was hostile, hostile to you. What law? The law of commandments. Contained in dogmas. Why do you do that? Because God wanted one family. He didn't want sections of family. He, want, he wanted them all together. He wants to give everybody a big hug. All together. Yep. Is the Ku Klux scan right? No. That's <laughs> satanic. They're saying that somebody with this complexion is better than that. No. You are all one in Christ with the gl real glory of the Holy Ghost living in you. The glory of the law is gone. That he might reconcile both to God in one body by what? The cross of Calvary. <laughs> he did what? Apocino. He executed the hostility between you and the law. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't. Oh, you did it? You're dead. You're judged. You're going to hell. Did you sin? Oh, you're doomed. You? You're finished. That's not a good relationship. What do we need to do here? Get rid of that and run to that. Calvary. So that even when you fail or sin, you are loved just the same. Did God judge you for your sin when you Came to the cross? Oh, absolutely. He judged Christ in your place. The law judged you personally. You get caught in adultery? Did you sleep with somebody's wife? How about you? Oh, you know what you get according to law? Stoned. You like getting stoned? Not a fun hobby. The law was hostile to us. Hostile.
you commit adultery now if you repent mercy covers it yeah. I do that in almost every counseling session with couples. I always try to save the marriage first if There's any hope of saving it, I focus on that first Why because I know about mercy. I left the law and I went to mercy But John the Baptist still there hey If you're gonna patch this thing up, you got to stop cheating Hello, that's called repentance. No. Is that the law of condemnation? No. That's grace telling you, hey, you can't keep cheating on her. You're hurting her. You're hurting yourself. You're picking up demons. But if you repent, you get a hundred percent mercy. It's as if you've never cheated. If they choose to forgive you, we can patch this thing up. That's not the law. That's grace, but it's not greasy grace Correct Greasy grace doesn't work The Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty where the law was there was bondage My God every time I fix something and I do something right. There's something else. I did wrong. It never ends The law of Moses has been Blotted out Colossians chapter 2 you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He's talking to the Gentiles now, right? Has God quickened Together with him having forgiven you all your sin the Greek word of course is a family. It means to release you from them all your sins in the law you could not do that you couldn't do that under the law. You'd offer a sin offering, right? You'd burn it up. God would cover your sin. Then you went out and sinned again. <laughs> then it got put back on your account. Now you're now you're judged. What well, system's not working because I'm not perfect? Duh. The law doesn't work when people aren't perfect. If you don't believe it, go on out here. Do it. Get on I-17. Don't run you over. <laughs> the law says 75 or whatever, and then all of a sudden it sneaks down to 55, and you don't notice. They never notice. They come down 51 there and make that one turn there. All of a sudden, out of the blue, it's 55. Yeah, that's a deliberate catch. But as soon as you travel one mile over 75, you broke the law yeah. The law is fine Paul said The problem is I can't keep it <laughs> But my sin is not covered now neither is yours it's gone <laughs> Under the law was still there. It was just covered. Then you went out and sinned again. You need another burnt offering. Some of you are some pretty heavy sinners. You'd be having burnt offerings every two hours. <laughs> oh, but one sacrifice, the precious blood of Christ. He entered once into the Holy of Holies, obtaining eternal redemption for us. No more offerings. Wow. Because part, some, not all of your trespasses were forgiven. All of them. Not leaving even one. It says it's blotted out. Exalifo. What does that mean? To smear away like a teacher. Two plus two equals five. Mike, you screwed that problem up. You screwed it up. Let's let's excalifo that. Let's get rid of that. We wiped it out. Oh, friend, don't you get it? Your sins wiped out, son. I know you're struggling with that because that rejection demon in your head is telling you, this guy's nuts. You sinned yesterday. You sinned yesterday. 
Yeah, your body did, but your spirit man didn't. Right. You are walking perfection. I know what you're thinking. Have you looked at me? Yeah, I looked at you. It was it was it was difficult. <laughs> but your spirit man is perfect. That's right. It's not your body. That thing's gonna be That's farmed right. out fast. Right. Oh, your spirit man is perfect. There's no sin in there, son. So you don't need a bunch of ordinances and dogmas telling you to do this and do that and fix this and fix that. Hey, it was all fixed at Calvary. It was against us and it was contrary to us. But what happened? The cross of Calvary took the law, all of it, Ten Commandments and everything, picked it up, put it right there, and nailed it to the cross. Jesus. Just like he nailed your sin there. Just like he nailed your curses there. Just like he nailed your sickness there. Right. He nailed it all. Right. Cross of Calvary. Because the law was contrary to you. It was your enemy. It was hostile to you. All it did all day long was act like a bad spouse. You ever had a bad spouse? Don't raise your hand. They always point out what you did wrong. It's like having a it's like having an insecure mother. You ever had an insecure mother? Uh-huh. Don't raise your hand. Did you did you take the garbage out? Yes, I did. Well, did you put the can back on the garbage? Did you clean the can? Did you put a bag back in? Did you put the did you fix it up? See, the law was always nitpicking you taking the trash out. Then at the end, the law would take the trash can and put it on your head. <laughs> Not anymore. God Almighty. Not greasy grace, but grace following repentance came to me and I got saved. Thank God I got saved. How'd you get saved? Did you do a good job? <laughs> no, I didn't do a good job. This is the point. I had to get saved. I couldn't do a good job. I was a chronic, systematic failure. Well, I can't wait to hang around Brother Mike. Hey, you got to understand something. Works. It's your enemy. It will steal your anointing. It will rot out your destiny. I got to do this. I got to do that. I could. Well, what if you don't do it? Whoa, I screwed up not see that's how condemnation comes in demons are brilliant. They're much smarter than Christians what they do is they tell you to do godly things They come to you and tell you hey You need to go to church Why don't you sing in the choir? You need to be faithful to God That's a demon telling you that you need to be faithful to God You know why they told you to be faithful to God? So when you're not, they come back to you and condemn you for screwing up. Is this for real? This is for real. They're religious demons. They know all about Christianity. They can quote you any verse and misquote it at the same time. Hey, you need to pray for people. What's wrong with you? Go on out and pray for them. You need to go pray for the homeless. That's a setup. They want you out on the street so you can pick up demons. It's a plot. They tell you good things to condemn you when you can't do them. Well, you went to church. You're doing a really good job going to church. You need to be there. You need, you need to be at church every week. Okay? Every single week. As soon as you miss a week. Oh, how come you weren't? What happened? I didn't feel good. Oh, you gutless loser. You got to push your way through that and serve God. You're not listening, are you? They'll tell you godly things so they can condemn you when you don't do them. That's legalism. Dude. A couple months ago, I issued a 
white shirt and tie policy here everyone's required to wear a white shirt and tie but <laughs> since you're all in rebellion <laughs> listen it's not what you're wearing it's what's in your heart son the law wants to know what you're wearing see Aaron had to spiff out before he went in to the Holy of Holies if he wasn't perfectly dressed like me he went in there he could be struck dead for the soul that sins that shall die the law only pointed out your faults. Even when it told you to do what was right. The demons love the law. The devil loves it. He loves the law. He uses it all the time on Christians. He quotes from it. Why? So you will start focusing on what am I doing? How's my works? Am I measuring up? Am I pleasing God through what I'm doing? Listen, the Bible says, Paul said, God loved you when you were still a sinner. Christ died for us. Bingo. It's gone. It's gone, folks. Hasta la vista. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Now, what's this verse actually saying? Digmatizo. Apparently, these are the same two terms, principalities and powers, uh, exosia and archon, used in Ephesians 6. We don't wrestle not against flesh and blood. The same, same words. This is a, a verse about the spirit world. Not not the natural world. Jesus never held a parade after his resurrection. He visited some of his disciples, gave them their final instructions, and then he was lifted up to sit at the right hand of Father in glory. Correct? We call that the ascension. This parade occurred after the resurrection in heaven. Why? Because God knew the devil loved the law. Because he couldn't keep it, and he knew we couldn't either. And when Jesus nailed the law to the cross, he sealed Satan's doom. He took away his greatest weapon for destroying you with self-criticism, self-hatred, and self-condemnation. There it is. That's the actual picture of the parade in heaven. I, I don't know how Google got that, but it was a celebration of ending the law and setting you free. Yes, sir. Party on, saints. The law of Moses was what? Canceled. Hebrews 7. There's verily a disannulling. Kethesis means to cancel it. Click. You're canceled, dude. We're stopping it. Why? Because it was weak. Why was that? It couldn't save you. It couldn't deliver you from demons. It couldn't heal you. The law only showed you you were hopeless and how sinful you are. Even if you're a good person, like a priest, <laughs> the priest used to come in and offer sacrifices for the people, correct? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says he had to offer sacrifices for himself. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Aaron looked darn near perfect compared to these pedophile Catholic priests. <laughs> these guys are raging perverts. Aaron might have been a pervert, but he wasn't raging. <laughs> Why is the law unprofitable? Nephethist. It was useless. It couldn't save you. It couldn't, it couldn't save you. It couldn't give you the Holy Ghost. It couldn't change your mind. It couldn't change your heart. It only told you, hey, here's the behavior I want out of you. You do it 
or you die. Oops, that's a, I'm in a bad spot with that kind of a law. I'm not going to make it. The law made nothing, tell you, uh oh, complete. Oh, the Bible says you are complete in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You are sinless. Why? You had one offering body and blood of Christ. No more offering. None needed. Why? You got a better hope now. So we could do what? Draw near to God. The law kept you away from God. Jehovah actually told Moses, hey, let's keep these Jews off this mountain. If they come up on this mountain, I'm going to fry them. <laughs> now that's a little loving person. Yes, he was loving. He was showing you holiness. See? It wasn't I hate you. It's you don't understand. I'm perfectly divinely holy and I told you to keep this law and you're not doing it So don't come up on this mountain okay? I'm gonna cook you That's right Most people don't want to be cooked. I Know that I've been counseling for 37 years. I've asked several people. Do you want to be cooked? But the answer is almost always no <laughs> I've had some people with you know Psychosis say yeah, it sounds like something different, but generally speaking. No, uh -uh. nobody wants to be cooked I want a better hope and I want to draw near to God not be told to stay off the mountain It's gone the law of Moses has disappeared. How do you know that where are you getting all this stuff Mike? I'm getting out of the Bible here. So don't Don't wait for me in the parking lot Hebrews 8 now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much he is the mediator of a better covenant with better promises. The old law was set up temporary. It was designed to be temporary. It was designed to be re-implemented at the end, after the dispensation of grace. Second coming, boom. Millennial, boom. Israel restored King David restored all the nations of the world have to come up annually to pay homage to the Son of God Christ the ruler the King of Kings and Lord of Lords Anybody read this in the Bible? It's in the Millennium the Sabbath Gone now reinstituted there Ten Commandments was part of the law of Moses. There was over 600 laws and 10 of them were on stones Well, no the law of Moses was given to Moses by God This is the law The law is divine and holy all of it But it was temporary Yeah, on stones. We just went over it. All that gone. What's new now? Mercy. There were ten of them on stones, thou shalt not, but there were another six hundred thou shalt nots in the rest of the law. Thou shalt not. And I said, I can't. I can't do it. The law said, I know you can't. That's the purpose of it. I'm showing you, you can't do it. Yeah, that's what I talked about earlier. Greasy grace. No, this isn't greasy grace. Grace is founded on sincere repentance. Using grace as an excuse for sin is greasy grace. Mega church grace. If the first covenant had been faultless, there was no need for a second one. True. Finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, dispensation of grace. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. 
not on stone tablets. In that he says a new covenant came in and the, he made the other one. In addition, it decayed. Pagliano, it became obsolete. This law is obsolete. It's considered to be basically an Edsel. That was a funny joke. Had anybody been my age? That was funny. It did what? Aphanismus. It vanished away. It's gone. That phone right there is the exact phone my granddad had when I was in grade school. It looks exactly the same. I remember it. And my granddad was cheap. And we were on a party line. I'm not even joking. You don't even know what I'm talking about. I picked up the phone to make a call like an idiot. I heard people talking on my phone. <laughs> Seriously. I yelled at my mom. I said, Mom, there's somebody talking on her phone. I thought it was a miracle. <laughs> Put that phone down, Mike. It's a party line. We got a party line. I said, this is no party. I was trying to make a phone call. And there's some crazy broad on there yakking away about. Mike, put that phone down. I was sitting watching TV one night, grade school. Secret Agent Man was on. That was a great show, Secret Agent Man. You don't even know how good that show was. You don't know. And my grandpa wants to make a call. And my grandpa's, you know, kind of a crotchety person, putting it mildly, you know. He heads over to the phone, picks it up, and somebody's talking on that phone. It's the same lady. He goes, bah, 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 and curses and slams the phone. <laughs> I look over at him. I go back to Secret Agent Man. Secret Agent Man. Secret. There's a lot of backslidden people here tonight. A couple minutes later, he, my granddad heads back to the phone. That one right there looks exactly like it. Picked it up. She's talking on it. He growls and curses and slams it down again. He had to do that four times before he picked it up. There's nobody on that phone. <laughs> she talked through four brutal exchanges with the law. My granddad had become the law of Moses. Thou shalt not talk long on a party line. <laughs> and so he picked it up and gave her a cousin. That crazy bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> I went right back to secret Asia man. I was tuning that out. See what I'm doing there is tuning out the law and headed for the secret kept hidden, the mystery of God for all the ages. That given to Paul, the mystery of God is what Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. It's not that phone, but that phone's obsolete. And what here's grace? It's these new. See-through phone that has everything on it. Yeah, you can clean your car with it. I mean, you can teleport somebody to your house. <laughs> but the old phone, you were lucky to get a call out on it, and it went like that. I'm not kidding. You had to spin the thing. And back then, as a grade school, I thought it was high tech. See, they thought the law was high tech. At the time right. see right. oh my god the Jews got the law hallelujah right. Paul explains it in Romans they were entrusted with the oracles of God right. oh Lord but when the new phones came in oh man I got rid of that phone there I got rid of it I got rid of it hopefully somebody got rid of that lady on there I went over to grace and picked up that phone and Teleported and pulled down movies and I got it all on that phone now. I got it all there. Sinless Mike. 
dying damned condemned Mike over there Dialing away. Can somebody help me? Jesus save me. Help me God. Help me God. There's no help for you You're a rotten sinner. Wait a minute. I ran to the cross of Calvary now. I'm not a rotten sinner anymore I saved by grace I should have died and went to hell mercy hauled me out of a pit and out of the miry clay Look the old Covenant was temporary. The new covenant is permanent. The old covenant was for a certain area. It was Israel. It's a little tiny country in the Middle East. There's nothing to it. There's Arabs all around them. And they don't and they want that land. They have all this land. As far as the eye can see, it's all Arabs. They're not satisfied. They want that little piece of land. And Jehovah won't give it to him. He won't give it to him. The Arabs are just like kids. If you tell a kid you can't have something, you know what they do? Anybody got kids? None of you? Well, when you have kids, here's how it works. This kid, if you tell him you can have everything over here, but don't touch that, they pull an Adam and Eve on you. They run right over. Well, wait a minute. I don't want that. Well, I want that. Yeah. Arabs got land everywhere. Arabs got land coming out of their ears. They got dust flowing. No, we want that little, tiny, little, smaller than what Delaware, teeny tiny spot. We want, uh, we want everything. The law was for who? Jews only. Correct. Yeah. If you were a proselyte, you had to meet series of rest. Restrictions and requirements and laws to be considered allowed to keep the law, and you were never fully a Jew. See, I used to be a rotten, stinking sinner. Now, my God, through grace, I've been placed in the family of God. Believable. It's amazing for somebody like me. The gospel isn't for this area. It's for every area, everywhere, for everyone. The law of Moses has been thrown out. Yes, it has. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? It's written that Abraham had two sons. Remember this story? Yes, sir. One by a bondmaid, one by a free woman. The bondwoman was born after the flesh Yes, sir. The law was an expert holy and righteous in pointing out my failures of my flesh It was fabulous Couldn't have been any better The other child was born by promise he says these things are a allegorio, which is the English word Allegory. Hey, it's an illustration. See, you've got the bondage child. You got the child of promise. Well, how am I going to get from there to here? Oh, there's a cross between them. Now you, sinless in the eyes of God, you are a child of God, a child of promise, because you came to God, like Abraham did. Before the law, he came through faith. Hey, dude, it's 2019. You can't lose. The one from Mount Sinai was what? Engendered, engendered what? Dulia. Slavery. Yeah, slaves. Yep, it's like being in a bad marriage. You get off work and you think, oh my God, I got to go back home to that battle axe. I can't get away. Then when you get a chance to get away, you're too tired and gutless to leave. What are you in? Slavery. Not anymore. My God, what happened? 
Oh, something happened. And not Hagar. I don't want Hagar. No, I want Isaac. Then he says it's like Jerusalem. Here's the earthly in Jerusalem run over by the Romans. You're not from that old Jerusalem. You are a citizen of the household of God. Because you left the law and ran to mercy. You don't understand. You've got royalty in your spirit, man. You're not getting it. So you're living way below God's standards for you. You don't have the law dragging you down anymore. Nobody's criticizing you anymore except demons and your relatives. They don't matter. <laughs> Father not criticizing you under any circumstances. It's not happening. You're no longer a slave. Now you are what? You're with Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. Above, he says, that one. We're not of the old Jerusalem. See, when Jehovah decided the law had run its course, click, <clears throat> he had to get rid of Judaism. Because you can't separate the two. So what did he do? He used Romans. He let the Romans overrun him in 70 A.D. Josephus writes all about it. It's incredible reading. 135 A.D. They made a comeback. Nope. The Romans came in and butchered them again. The temple was destroyed. They stole all the tools and all the sacred instruments in the temple. They tore the place down. They burned it to the ground. Well, what happened to Jehovah? Wasn't he big enough and strong enough to... Well, what is he, a screw-up? Oh, hardly. He wanted that system gone. Now, the temple's not there. The temple's sitting right there. Amen. You are the temple of God. You're living so far below your standards. 2019, you are to step it up. That's prophetic. He says, Rejoice, you that bear not. He's quoting out of uh, Isaiah 54. Break forth and cry, you that do not travail. The desolate has many more children. What's he saying there? The Gentiles will far outnumber the Jews in eternity. The, gen the Jews were God's chosen people, and the Gentiles ran off with it. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. We were last, we're going to be first. Yeah. All these verses sound great to me because I was a gasping loser. Sold under sin. I couldn't do what was right. And when I did something right, I'd puff myself up. Boy, you did a good job, Mike. I didn't know I was wearing used tampons. <laughs> My righteousness in God's eyes was like filthy rags. Filthy rags. Women's rags they wore during menstruation. Listen, you were... Women were unclean during that period. They booted them out the door. The rags were to be taken outside the camp, buried. Which is where I was headed. Somebody's going to take me outside the camp and bury me. But I heard mercy knocking at the door. I heard it. Most people don't answer it. I did answer it. You answered it. Most people do not answer it. Correct? We, brethren, as Isaac, we are children of the promise. Amen. Galatians 4. As then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him, born after the spirit. Of course. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, and the devil marks you. You're a marked man or woman right now. Yeah. You know why your life goes bad all the time? You're marked. You've been sealed by the Holy Ghost in here. In the spirit world, they can see that. You can't see somebody who's saved. They can see it immediately in the spirit world. And they bring hell and high water to you every chance they get. 
why because you're a threat to them There's a chance you could change your Mickey Mouse Christian life and start turning it around And he knows the Holy Ghost has the ability to do that for you. Amen. He knows that The Holy Ghost is the only person that demons truly fear Because they know He will kick their face in and do it effortlessly if you will fight back. If you sit there, he ain't going to do nothing. What says the scripture? He says, cast out the bondwoman. Ekbalo. That means throw out. Throw out the law. Throw out judgment. Throw out condemnation. Throw it out. You are the child of a free woman. You are the child of promise. Yeah. Your relatives look at you and they go, oh God, you gotta be kidding me. God looks at you. There's my girl. There's my boy. This year you're gonna see yourself differently. You. You're gonna look at yourself differently. Wait a minute here. I'm not a piece of crap like the devil told me. I'm some royalty in here. Yes. My God, I left the law and condemnation and judgment. I ran to the cross and clung to it like a man dying. Mercy found me. The son of the bondwoman shall not be heir. You cannot combine. Okay, what's happening now? The devil's telling the Messianic Jews, listen, you've told the Jews that they like that. Now tell the Gentiles that. You need to keep the law, you need to keep the Sabbath, you need to keep the festivals, you need to keep the feasts. It's coming. They're telling the, the Gentiles now they need to be doing these Jewish things. No. The bondwoman is cast out, the free woman is yours. They cannot live together. Jehovah told him, get rid of them. God's telling you, there's people in your life you need to get rid of. ASAP. So they're doing you absolutely no good. Did that kill Abraham? I think it did. You know, Abraham was a good man. He had tremendous character. And I think he loved her. I can't prove it, but I think he did. Because Sarah came to him, ragging on him. Yeah. Never happens in a marriage, but it did that day. She said, get her out of here. Get that out. He goes, oh man, I can't do it. You do it. Then he pulls rank on her. Well, you're in charge of her. That's your job. He runs out the door. <laughs> Why did he do that? Why did he do that? I think he loved her. And it was Sarah's fault. She told him, go into her tent. Party on, dude. Well, there was more than partying going on there. There was an affection there. There was, there was a love there. I can't prove it, but I believe that. He couldn't get rid of her. Yeah. But he knew he had to so he had her do it Let's learn the lesson if you can't do it work it out so it gets done either way get it done for 2019 Get it out of your life If you can't come right up and do it, okay Use your Negotiation tools improvise Get rid of these people that are slowing you down and hurting you. Get rid of your besetting sins. You are part of the free woman. Brethren, we are not children of the bond woman. We are free. Christians are delivered from the law. It says in Romans chapter 7. When we were in the flesh, the motions, pathoma means emotions or passions. The passions of sin, which were dia through the law, Worked in our melos body parts I 
Now that's interesting. To bring forth death. What happens when you walk in the flesh? Yes. What causes you to do that? The law and sin. When the law came, sin revived and I died, Paul said. Your body parts can be used to sin. Duh. But now he says, we are delivered from the law because it's been wiped out. Chucked. That being dead we're in, we were held. We should serve in newness of spirit. Not in the oldness of the letter. What's he talking about there? We don't live out of our body and our flesh anymore. We now live out of our spirit man. If you follow the spirit, it leads to eternal life. If you lust after the flesh, it leads. What's the purpose of the law? Here it is, Romans chapter 3. By the works, ergon, works of the law, no one will be justified in the sight of God. For by the law is the epignosis, complete knowledge of sin. The law was fantastic. It showed me I was a sinner and I couldn't save myself. Thank you. Now that you've showed me that, how do I get saved and filled with the Spirit? Can't do it. You mean I'm going to die a slave to the law? Yes. There's nothing you can do. Oh, wait a minute. In the fullness of time, God sent his only son. Now I'm no longer under the law. I am under grace. Christ is the end, tell us, the conclusion of the law. For what? The righteousness of God. For everyone who keeps the law? No. Believes. Yes. Duh. You can't keep the law. That was the point of it. But in God's eyes, you're holy when you reach out by faith and believe. What the law could got could not give you which is perfection you now have If you died right now your spirit man your inner man would go to heaven and your spirit man would not improve Is this one um, If you died and went to heaven right now your spirit man would not get any better you're already perfect Your soul and your mind and all that stuff that would all get better and at the resurrection this Stinking body of mine. I get a brand new Terminator type body yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir, but my spirit man doesn't change why it's perfect the Holy Ghost wouldn't live in there if it wasn't perfect Are you are you understanding? He doesn't live in a dirty filthy stinking Spirit man. No. Unsaved people do not have the Holy Ghost. A Christian is required to keep any portion of the law. No, let no man therefore judge you in meat. Translation what you eat, what you drink. Holy day. Or a day is what? Feasts. How about a new moon? Or a Sabbath How about a blood moon I threw that one in <laughs> which are only a what shadow of Christ don't you see it no more feasts Christ or feasts no more festivals Christ my festival no more Sabbath Christ my Sabbath <laughs> What I want to do tonight is make friends and influence people. <laughs> Romans 14. One man 
esteem, he's talking to Christians now. One man esteems one day over another. Okay? Well, we worship God on Saturday. We worship on Tuesday. We worship on Wednesday. We worship on Blood Moon Day. We worship on Eclipse Day. We worship on My Dog Day. Uh, it doesn't matter what day you worship on. Duh! Under this system, it mattered. Correct? Yeah. Let every man be fully, fully persuaded in his own mind. He that are, regards the day regards it to the Lord. He that regards not the day, the Lord, he does not regard it. Translation is none of your beeswax. That's Arabic. <laughs> Listen, if you worship God on Saturday, that's fine. It's none of my business. You do it Tuesday. That's none of my business. How about Thursday? Well, nobody worships on Thursday. That's a bad day. But Wednesday, uh, that's a good day. <laughs> Stupid. What's Paul telling you? Pick your day, dude. Okay? Pick it. What do you like? Every day, yeah, perfect answer. Every day is a Sabbath in Christianity. In the old day, it was a certain day, and the days varied. He that eats, eats to the Lord. Okay? So, all religions have certain dietary restrictions, not in Christianity. Now, there may be some limitations on it. Let's say you got in a huge mood for a big bowl of rat poison. Uh, that's probably a sin because in your mind there's a chance I could commit suicide that's not what that's talking about it's talking about religious dietary restrictions under this old law there were all kinds of dietary restrictions right so if you wanted to go to Red Lobster after you ate they stoned you So it didn't matter whether you left a large tip. Walk down the parking lot. <laughs> boom, you're stoned. You don't eat. Now, you can eat snails you find in your yard. It's up to you. You pick it. It has no spiritual ramifications. Oh God, Mike, I can't let's blasphemy. You, you stinking teacher. Ah, you probably eat pork. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, I've had a little ham here and there. <laughs> but under this system, here, oops, you have some ham, then you get a stone right here. Oh. In this system, mercy, use your own judgment. Okay? You like a little port, do you? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I consider you a sinner, but God doesn't. <laughs> you like snails? You like raw goat? I, I'm not going to say one thing. It's none of my business. It's between you and God. If you eat, you eat between you and the Lord. If you don't eat it, you eat it not between you and the Lord. Is anybody confused over this? Paul is saying none of this stuff matters anymore. This is gone. Muslims have that. They have various dietary restrictions. Okay, Catholics have that. Certain foods eaten on a Friday or different things. In Christianity, nothing, there's nothing there. Use your own judgment. Now, should you eat something bad for you? I mean, no, but I mean, it's not a sin, you know. I know Christians that uh, love pie. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, you're not, not a very good Christian if you eat pie, but <laughs> it's, not, it's not a sin to knock off some cheesecake or something. That's between you and God. Okay, 
Should you eat six or seven pies? No, I mean moderation in all things Paul said use come common sense about what you're eating and what you're with come on But it's not I'm talking about sin. It was a sin over here It's not a sin here to eat cheesecake Hello, it says he that eats it's right there now after you've known God or are known of God Galatians 4 how do you then turn back to the weak and beggarly elements of what the Galatians had started to mix the two there Christianity Islam Chrislam Judaism Christianity pork why do you get again desire to be in slavery come on this is freedom the letter kills the spirit gives life you observe days months kairos seasons years you're scaring me he says what were they doing going as a dog goes back to his vomit the devil had gotten the messianic Jews to blend in Judaism and Christianity if you do that you are going back to junk if I decide to keep the biblical Sabbath what should I do well according to the law of God you cannot cook on the Sabbath we can get around that they call it fast food <laughs> now you are not allowed to work on the Sabbath the rabbis in ancient Israel had them all say well what's the definition of work so then they had to piecemeal that out and figure out what work was see? is it gainful employment is it volunteer work is it is this work opening my eyes is it they had all this stuff nitpicked out Muslims do the same thing you are not allowed to gather wood that was an easy one for me to go with you're not allowed to travel anywhere oh the rabbis then had to sit down what's the definition of traveling okay so back then they didn't have in-house restaurants is that traveling out to the outhouse <laughs> or is it traveling from one village to another what so the rabbis would then put this all in the Talmud and they would decide for them what traveling was what is rest what is oh boy you weren't allowed to buy or sell anything Gee, that kills all the swap meets you're not allowed to carry heavy items that's so fun What's the punishment for breaking the Sabbath? Anybody know? You die. <laughs> Jeez, the law was extra hostile to me. The hostility is killing someone. The Sabbath, though, in the Old Testament, guess what? It were different kinds of Sabbaths. So which Sabbath are you going to keep? The one on the first day of the week? The seventh day? The eighth day? Which is it? Well, I don't know. How about the length of your Sabbath? If you're going to keep the Sabbath, according to the Old Testament, some of them were for one day, one were, some were two days, some of them were a year long. Some they, some of them were celebrated every seventy years. Did you know that? Well, you got to figure all this stuff out if you're going to keep the Sabbath. Which Sabbath are you talking about? Guess what? The Sabbath is reinstituted when? After the dispensation of grace in the millennium and all nations the nation of Israel all goes back That's why it says in the old term this is eternal that's eternal this is eternal It is eternal, but there was this gap in there Consider yourself gapped <laughs> That's deep What's the Christian Sabbath? What is the Christian? Anybody know? It's Christ. Yeah, Paul explains it in detail in chapter 4 of Hebrews. 
Come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. There remains a rest to the people of God Christ is your Sabbath So you pick your day. What's your day? You don't even have a day this guy's a heathen where's your what's your Sabbath day? Every day what's yours? Oh, Sunday heathen What's yours sir every day? What's yours ma'am? Is Sunday a sa Christian Sabbath? So, of course not. There is no Sabbath with them. You just make it. It doesn't matter. Pick a day. It's all good. Why did they celebrate Sunday? It's it's fine. The resurrection was Sunday. This and that happened. There's nothing wrong with that. Use Sunday then. You like Saturday? Wednesday? Whatever. It's all good. You could even pretend this is your Sabbath. Okay? I'm your saboteur. <laughs> there it is. What do these have to do with Christians? Anybody know? What about blood moon? Sabbath, circumcision. Don't raise your hand. But anybody here not circumcised? We don't want you here. Uh, feasts and festivals. Feasts and festival. Okay. Wearing certain clothing, eating certain foods. What does all this have to do with a born again Christian, Jew or Gentile? Anything. What does it have to do? Here's the divine revelation. Got it right here. Have you ever been there? Some rich guy bought that town. <laughs> that's nothing, Arizona. Okay? And that's what you're going to be if you don't get out of the law and get over here in mercy. Questions in this section? Hey, uh, can you hold on just a second? That's a good question. Hey, uh, have you got a, a mic, mic over there? Thank you. He, he, this guy. That guy over there. Thank you. We'll take a few questions here before we close the service. I just uh, want to ask in the new, the New Testament when. God is like, you know, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What was the question? Well, like, how does, you know, since we're no longer under the law of Moses, which was oh, the okay, Ten Commandments. Yeah, know, he's talking about the left? New Testament commandments. There was over 600 Old Testament commandments, and there's over a thousand New Testament commandments. But how they're processed, and what happens to you when you break them? Totally different now If you break a New Testament commandment and you repent of it grace covers it hundred percent It's like you never broke it In the Old Testament you could have been stoned Any questions anywhere else before we close Looks like you're all lawed out is anybody angry at me right now? No. No. Okay. Let's close in prayer then. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you just for a second before I go to prayer. If you came out of a legalistic religion, Judaism, Messianic Judaism, Seventh-day Adventists, uh, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, something like that, or you have that in your family tree, you could have picked up familiar spirits. A week and a half ago, a guy comes to see me for counseling, and he was Hispanic. I mean... Hardcore Hispanic. I mean his relatives probably went back to the Aztecs or something and he got saved 22 years ago and A couple of years after that 
uh, a demon told him that he had Jewish blood in his heritage and told him that he Should go to a messianic synagogue so he left uh, the Pentecost church and went to a messianic synagogue for about 20 years thinking he was Jewish he told everybody he thought he was Jewish and everybody thought he was nuts nobody said anything he comes in and goes through deliverance these spirits from this messianic congregation were flying out of this guy he wore shawls he wore caps he he did all these things I was calling out those spirits and I called out that spirit that told him he was Jewish that thing came roaring out of this guy the demons tell you you have to eat dress go worship here do this do that do this do that do this do that and it all sounds good and some of it is good but they're waiting for you to break it so they can condemn you I apologize for offending you but all these years I've been doing deliverance these messianic Jewish demons are very smart and they're very powerful Several years ago, I was working with a ministry called Acts 29. I was doing altar work for him. And this guy comes down, he's African American, and he's got a prayer shawl on. He comes down to the altar and gets tremendous deliverance. Tremendous. When he's done, I say to the guy, what do you what is that thing on your shoulder? It's oh, it's my prayer shawl. I said that You don't need that prayer shawl. You got the Holy Ghost. We need a prayer shawl for it. Oh No, I've got to keep it. I got I can't I said listen, sir You're running a risk here by thinking that there's some divine something attached to that clothing It's just clothing Two years later, I went to a service in South Phoenix here to a church to listen to a guest speaker, and that guy was there. And he was sitting down in the front, and he was, he was laughing hysterically with kundalini spirits. He had gotten completely reinfected. The letter kills, but the Holy Spirit gives life. Rituals, forms, days, moons, observations, all that stuff draws in demons. Demons love the law because they know we can't keep it so they can condemn us. Have I made a lot of friends tonight? Probably not, but. <laughs> What I'm trying to do is get you to see that behind religion, any religion, is, is spirits, familiar spirits. They run these religions. They use them to deceive you. They use them to trick you. Let's pray then father God Phew. Finish that Bible study Lord and with your permission. I'm not going to do it again But tonight there's some people here who got deceived and got into religion and rituals and days and Sabbaths and years and whatever it is and They picked up familiar spirits and these spirits 
work on their minds These spirits tell them to do good things and then they condemn them when they can't do them all Now pray Lord any person that's in that condition or was in a Judaism or got into a messianic Jewish synagogue and was told that they had to do Certain things to please you I Pray Lord you will deliver them from those spirits that I any religious spirit Mormonism Extremely ritualistic Jehovah's Witnesses another cult extremely realistic Ritualist. Now I pray right now, Lord, for every Messianic Jew, every one of them in Maricopa County. I pray you'll bless them. I thank you for their lives. They love you. They're serving you. And I pray your anointing rests upon them. I pray right now for each person here who got sucked into a religious system of do's and don'ts, starts and stops. I pray right now for them. For their healing and deliverance tonight in Jesus name all right raise your hand by any chance let me take an audit here who raise your hand if you think you might have picked up one of these familiar spirits from a religious outfit doesn't have to be Judaism could be something else or religion or masonry or something like that from your family tree you just raise your hand one and then, and then, one. Okay. okay. All right. Now just come down here to the front. Now we want to pray for you before you leave and break this curse of religion off of you. Just come down the front there. You got a familiar spirit from religion. Familiar spirit from religion. Let's say you went to a. Uh, just face me here. Stand right here in this line. Face me. Okay. Thank you. Ministry team is going to come down here to help me. And right here, thank you. Let's say you went to a church then, and you went through a prayer tunnel, and somebody put their hands on you. You went through a fire tunnel, a prayer tunnel. Let's say your family was in another religion, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Islam, and those spirits are in your family tree. Let's say you picked up a spirit when somebody told you that you need to wear a piece of jewelry of some kind And that piece of jewelry will bring you closer to God and jewelry is important to you You picked up a spirit from jewelry Jewelry is A demonic trick It gives you a false sense of security Your anointing comes from the Holy Spirit your spirit man not from something you put on Not from some good deed you did. Mercy is where your anointing comes from. Grace comes. You came from a foreign country or something, and your family was in a weird Christian religion that had lots of demons, like Catholicism, Orthodox, Orthodox. Ritualistic spirits do this don't do that keep this don't keep that wear this put that on Go here go there You have to do this you have to do that did you come from that background? We don't want to pray for you tonight and break that curse off if you have to leave. Thank you for coming tonight Thank you for supporting the seminars and your donations. God love all of you We're gonna have a great year this year close your eyes now sweet Jesus Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every familiar spirit standing right in front of me. Every spirit, every religious demon, every familiar spirit from Judaism, from Messianic synagogues, from Mormonism, from Jehovah's Witness, from Christadelphians, from Hinduism and Buddhism, Islam, in the name of Jesus Christ, Catholicism, Orthodox. I come against every and any religious spirit tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you in Jesus' mighty name. 
and my friends are going to bind you to you filthy spirit in the name of Jesus I bind this familiar spirit attached to my body I bind this spirit hiding in my body right now I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of me I renounce religion laws works I renounce it in Jesus name there it is. I renounce it. it. Come out of that body right now. Here it comes. There it comes. Come on out. I renounce religion in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now. I want nothing to do with religion. Hold that. I want nothing to do with religion. Nothing. 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 From me your spirit, I bind your power. Come out. Church demons, come out. Come on out of there. Come out. Christian religion spirits, come out. Spirits from foreign countries that bind your power. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Right now. Come out of me in Jesus' name. Come out of me right now. I command you to come out of me. Say it. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. There you go. Come on out. You can come out in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. Come out. I bind sorcery and witchcraft. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out, witchcraft. Come out, body, right now. Hurry up. Every familiar spirit. I bind every demon from church. Every spirit from the church. Every one of them. Come on out of there. Come on. Satan, come out of me. Satan, come out of me. Say it. Come out of his body. Come out of me right now. There it is. Come on out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of here. Come out right now. Come out. Witchcraft. Come out of my body right now. Go. Sorcery. Familiar spirits. Religion. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' Get out of my body right now. Get out of my body right this second. I'm thinking of lust. There he comes. Come out. Come out right now. Spirit of lust. Go in Jesus' name. Come on out. Hold that. Come on out right now, I said. Get out of my body right now. Fight harder. Come out. Fight harder. Fight harder, I said. Fight harder. Come on. The Holy Ghost is moving. Satan, loose your hole in me. Religion, come out. Religion, come out. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is here. Reach out. Come on, he's ready to go. The Holy Ghost is ready, willing, and able. Now! Fight back now! Come on! Come out in Jesus' name. Every demon come out of this section over there. Every one of them. Every spirit come out of this section right here. Demons of food. Food demons. Eating foods on a certain day. Days, months, years. Sabbath demons. Every demon from the Sabbath come out. Sabbath demons. Moon demons. New moons. Come out. Come out in Jesus' body name. Take a deep breath. Get it out. Come on. Keep coughing. Come out of that body right now. Fight harder. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come on, fight harder. Fight harder. Come out in the name of the Lord. Every demon from the Sabbath. Sabbath spirit, come out. Every demon from a synagogue, come out of there. Every demon from a synagogue, come out. Get out. Get out. You stinking pervert. Come out of the man of God. Come out of the man of God. Get out of my body. I said I hate you. Did you hear me? I hate you. Come on. I curse you, homosexual spirit. You lesbian. You gay spirit. Go. Go. Come out now. Come out. 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 Come Come out faster, quicker. You're stalling. Come out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my room right there. Come out of there. Come out. Every demon from the Sabbath. Come out. Every demon. Seasons. Days. 
feast, festivals, every demon from the feast, come out. Every demon, Judaism, come out. Jewish feast, come out. Come on out of there. Right now. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Say it. Get out of my body in the name of Jesus Christ. Say it. Get out in Jesus' body name. Come out in Jesus' name. Fear demon. Come out. Embarrassment. Low self-esteem. Embarrassment. Come out. Rejection. Rejection. Nobody likes me. Reject. Reject. Come out. Come out. Religion. False religion. Go. Hurry up. Come out. Satan, I command you to come out. You observe times, seasons, years. Come out. Hurry up. Get out of there. Eating fish on Friday. Come out of me. Eating fish on Friday. Demon of fish. Come on out. Obesity. Come out. Food demons. Come out. Right now. Right now. Right now. Calamity spirits. Poverty. Disasters. Go in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there. Come out right now. Come out, buddy. Come out quicker. 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 Quicker! Come out! Hatred, murder, anger, hatred! Murder and hatred and anger! Come out of his spine! Come out of his spine! Come on! Just repent of it! God have mercy on me! Get out quicker! Come out quicker! There he comes! Come out, evil! Come out, religion! Using my own mind to fix myself! Come out! I cannot fix myself. Come out. Come out, you liar. Come out, you liar. Stop hiding in there, you stinking pervert. Die, buddy. Stop yelling at people. Filthy spirit. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Stop blocking his anointing his ministry. Stop it. Stop right now. Stop it right now, I said. Stop. Stop. Frustration. Anger. Come out. Right now. Come out. Come on out. Rituals. Religion. I repent of it right now. Rituals and religion. I repent of it. Judaism. I repent of it. Wearing certain clothes. I repent of it. Wearing a, something on my head. I repent of it. Satan, come out. Come out. Come out. I am a born again child of God. I've been made perfect and holy in the eyes of God through faith. Not eating something. Not wearing something. Not going somewhere. My faith in Christ. He is the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Come on. Let's do it. Out. Out. You fight. You have to fight. You have to fulfill your call. You have to fulfill your call. Right? Okay. You got to fight for it. You got to fight for it. The devil's not going to just hand it to you. You've got to fight for it. Right now. Do it now. Do it now. Um, I wanted you to pray for me for something you said last week. About what you said last week. Well, you said something about forgiving your brother and then for holding on. I need really specific prayer for that. Mm -hmm. And then you said that if a Christian has a short season of has a short season of financial lack, that's okay. But if it's year after year, yeah. it has to be broken off. Yeah, it has to be broken off. We can't break it up until the spot goes. 
Lord Jesus, I spent years living with lies in my head. Now the demons are making me pay for it. They stolen all my money. They stole my home. They stole my peace. They steal my rest. I had aught for family members. Aught. Aught. For family members. My brother. When you abused him, when you abused him, it boomeranged. We can break it. Okay, go ahead and repent. No, really repent. I want you to really repent in tears. You're trying, but it's not there. Why? 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 What is it about your brother? You don't like no it's just the I, like you said I think I repent for what I did with my oldest brother it came back it came back the young uh -huh. but why did you do it to him you why did the, you hurt him you said the demons but I think it's generational yeah they told you to do it but why did you do it there was a reason you yeah. didn't like him. Not necessarily. I think it's just down right out meanness. I could get away with it because I have more power. I think I was just mean. That's what I think all of those things were there. Right? But your bo your brother bothered you in some way. What was it about you look at him, you sensed something or felt something? What what didn't you like about it? Open up. Oh, a lot of things. Oh, a lot of things. What's the top oh, two? Bob, use your anointing. Oh, up and out, up and out. Yeah, I don't know how to put it in words. I don't know how to get it. Out. You know why you don't like somebody? Forgiveness come out of this body right now. Were you jealous of it? What? Were you jealous of it? No, I think I'm jealous of the younger one. I'm jealous of the younger one, not the older one. Good. Okay, that's the second thing we got to get rid of. Jealous of the older one. Hatred for the other one. Wow, there's a lot to repent of here. We got to do it quick because you need a miracle now. You need to get out of your situation quickly. Come on. Dear Jesus, oh God, I'm so sorry. No, 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 not a church prayer. Pray from your heart. Pray from your gut. God. God help me. Lord Jesus. Oh, God, help me. I hated my brother. I treated him like trash. God, help me. God, help me. I was jealous of my other brother. I wounded my family. I hurt all of them. I lived like Satan. I, I, I lived like a demon. God, save me. God, help me. Help me, Lord. Out. That body right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. You stop stalling. You let this man of God go. You let his healing ministry go right now. Let it go. I said, let it go. Come out right now. Come out of his guts right now. You stinking masturbator. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Lust of the eyes. Come out of his head. Come out of there right now. Resentment toward his parents. Come out right now. Get out of his stomach. Resentment. Bitterness. Adultery with demon infected women. Come on out right now. Come on out. Get out of that body. Hurry up. Come out in Jesus' name. All evil and wickedness. Come out of me right now. Out of my body. Out of my soul. Go. Come on. You're perfect in your spirit, man. The sin is not in your spirit, man. It's your body. It's your soul. It's your mind. Come on. Repent of it. You listen to demons and you have chronic negative thoughts. Repent of it. I renounce spirits in my brain. I renounce what they say. I command them to come out. I command you to come out of me right now. Say it. Come out. There you go. Good. Good. Say it again. Come on out. I am so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. 
I break this curse of poverty off of me now. I break this curse off me now. Poverty. Poverty. Homelessness. Break. Break off. Break in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What religion was it? I used to follow. What? I was a Roman Catholic. You know what? I was a Roman Catholic. Oh boy. Just renounce it and ask God to forgive you. Go ahead. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I renounce everything about it. Everything I can think of. Just renounce it. Everything you think of. I renounce every ritual, every service I was ever in. I renounce all of it. All of it, I said. Get out. And I command the familiar spirit. Familiar, come out of my head. I command this thing, come out of my head. Religion, come out of my head. I command you to come out of my head. Go. Come out of my head now. Go. All right, take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe. Holy Ghost, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Are you speaking tongues? Go. Louder. Louder. Come on out, buddy. Come on out. Come out. Lord, give her godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Come in. Lord, I'm so sorry I hurt you. Witchcraft, rituals, jewelry, satanic jewelry, come out. Satanic jewelry, out. Out. Could I throw out a David Pippen star? Oh, yeah. Throw it out. Star of David demons, out. Star of David, come out. Out! Star of David. You don't need a star of David. You need the bright morning star. The mighty son of God. You don't need a star of David. Oh God, we give praise to the bright morning star. We don't need a star of David. You don't need a star of no Hollywood walk of fame that leads to the gates of hell. Just repent of it now. Repent of it now. Say you're sorry. Confess it. Just confess it. YouTubers, come on. Stand in front of your computer there. Be aggressive. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Come on. Put on the whole armor of God right now. Put it on. Warfare. Pick that sword up. Pick up the incredible sword of the Holy Ghost, the one and only. Pick up that sword. Pick up that Holy Ghost sword and fight back. Come out, Indian jewelry. Indian jewelry. I renounce those spirits on Indian jewelry. I command that to break. Dream catchers. Dream catchers. You will be dreaming in hell after you keep your dream catcher. Get rid of it now, quickly. All forms of witchcraft. Native American jewelry. Gods of the mountain and the skies and the stars and the sun. I'll renounce it in Jesus' name. I'll renounce it in Jesus' mighty name. Spirits of anger and murder. Come out! Come out! Thus saith the Lord. You observe times and days and years. Thus saith the Lord. Away with it. Away with it, saith the Lord. 
Every demon from the Sabbath, come out! Every new moon demon, every blood moon demon, come out! Satanic blood moon, come out! You don't need a blood moon. You need the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Blood moon, I curse you. Come out. New moons, come out. Eclipses, come out. Right now. Eating fish on Friday. I renounce it. I renounce it. In the latter time, says the Lord, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and teachings of demons, telling people what they shall eat, what they shall wear. Repent of it. Repent of it. Come on. What you eat has nothing to do. Uh, he was uh, in an Asian religion. I forgot the name of it. What you eat has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You cannot get closer to God by eating a certain type of food. You cannot get closer to God drinking a certain type of drink. How you get closer to God is when you fall on your knees. You fall on your knees. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Looking to the bright morning star, not the star of David. Get rid of it. Not Indian jewelry. Get rid of it. Not Mother Mary. Not your rosary. Get rid of it. Rosary demons, come out! Mother Mary spirits, come out! Go now! Moroni! Mormon demons, I curse you, come out! Joseph Smith demons, Brigham Young demons, child abuse, Mormon child abuse, Catholic priest, child abuse, come out! Catholic bishop, child abuse, come out! Right now! Every wicked, evil spirit in Jesus' name must leave now. No question. Come out now. If you will fight, the Holy Ghost will deliver you. But you've got to fight. you got to do something. You have to fight back. If you don't fight back, you're going to go broke. You're going to die sick. It's all going to go bad for you. Come on, let's fight back now. Go. There it comes. There it goes. Hallelujah. There it goes. Come on, everybody, right now. Get out of there. Every spirit from her dad. Every spirit from adultery. Every ugly man. Go. All of them. I want everything out tonight. Go. Ancestor spirits. Spirits from other countries. Come out now. Go. How's he doing? How's he doing? A little bit. Got a little bit. Come on now. Fight harder. Fight harder. I have a question. Yeah. When I was shouting in your office, what was happening? When you were what? When I was yelling and shouting in the. Session. You were fighting back. Yeah, that was the real you coming out. Yeah, the demon you is a quiet, shy guy. You have to do the opposite of what he tells you. To beat demons, you have to do the opposite of what they tell you. To serve God, you got to do what he tells you. 
It's that simple. Satan, come out. There you go. Get out of me. Come out. Come out. Come on. Just fight back. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come on, YouTubers, fight back now, quickly. Fight back quickly. Come on. Come on, you gotta step up. You gotta step up. What's wrong with that girl? Huh? What's going on with her? We both were um, caught up in a Masonic oh, no. tie. She was a Mason? Underground. No, we, she was um, had a daughter from a guy who was part of a, the Black Letter Greek Club. So what? Right? Black Greek fraternity. Uh, what was his name? Um, Jermaine. And he, she had Jermaine? a baby from him. You had a baby with Jermaine? And he sacrificed both of them. And then they attacked me because I was warring against them. And I didn't oh. know what All I was right. warring against. All right. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Breathe out of your mouth. There you go. Father God, I want you to forgive this beautiful woman for what she'd done. She got involved with a demon infected Jermaine. And when she slept with him, something transferred in here. Please forgive her, Lord. Please forgive her. Please forgive her. We ask you now, Lord, to forgive Jermaine and to bless him and to have mercy on him. Please forgive him for what he done to us. I place him in your loving hands. And I want Jermaine's demons out of me. All of them. Out of my genitals. My stomach. There he is. Keep, keep burping. Come out. Out of my back. Out of my rectum. Oral sex. Come out of my mouth. Out. Come out of there, Jermaine. Right now. Come on out. Come out of there. There he is. That's him right there. Come on out. Get him out of there. Jermaine, I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out of me. Come on out. Come out of me, I said. Quickly. Quickly. Come out. Evil. Come out of me. Evil. Evil. Come out of my body right now. Every spirit from Jermaine and his family and his parents. Out. Every masonry demon, I renounce you in Jesus' name. I renounce you. I curse you to failure. Come on. Come out of there, you mason. Come out right now. Get out of my head. Quickly. Come out of my womb. Come out of my womb. Come on out, I said. Right now. Say it. Come out of my womb right now. And a girl. Come out of my throat. Come out of there. Come out of my throat. Come out of my stomach. I'm out right now. Come out of my head. Cannot stay. I do not give him permission to stay. Come out now. <coughs> there it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Jermaine, I command you in Jesus' name to come out of my friend right now. Come out right now. Get out of her. Get out of her right now. Jermaine, come out. Come out right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now in the name of the Lord. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. You get out of that body right now. There it is right now. Keep coughing. There it comes. Come on out. There it goes. Come out. Come out of there. Come on out. Out, I said. Hurry up. Hurry up, quicker. Quickly. 
There it goes. Quickly. Every one of them. Quickly. Out. You have to be, they have to accept you and myself. The things are getting very thirsty. Oh my gosh. I love those people. I can't just turn my back to them. But I don't believe this is bad the way it was before. But I was, I was telling this to Pastor when they started coming here since 2013, what happened in my life. They told me, God has been working on you. But I don't believe the way they pray. I think the way they are doing just lose of time. But it can't come to them like that. I just thought, I have to teach them to the other people how we pray. And they, this lady said, Lou, you have to more faith than I. But she, she said she felt better after the talk we have. But yes, the things get very thirsty. Remember what one day you go talk to them. All right. All right. Let's, the rest of them have to go now. There they come. Come on out. Come out. Quickly. Come out of my stomach right now. Quickly. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my womb. Come out of my back right now. Come out of my back. Come out of my back. Go. Go. Leave your spine right now. Leave that spine. Go. Come out of there. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Hurry up. Go. Get out of her back right now. By that spine. Every spot. Every spot. There it is. Come out. Kundalini. Come out of her sacrum. Out. Out. Out of her neck. Out. Hurry up. Let's go. Come out of there. Get out of her feet right now. Go. Come out. Come out of her feet right now. Go. Come out of her feet. Hurry up. Come out right now. Fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Come on out. Fight harder, honey. Fight harder. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Big yawn. Come out. Next one. Go. Next one. Go. Out. Next one. Go. Out. Put out that spine and go. Come out of her sacrum. There he is. There he comes. Go. Come there, spirits. Go. Go. Hurry up. Go. Come on. You come out of her spine. Brazil, go. Brazil. Get out of there. Come on, sweetheart. You fight harder. Harder. You're supposed to be free. You hear me? Go. Come on now. Get out of my sacrum right this second. Hurry up. Get on my body right now. Right there. Come on up. Come out of my spine. Thoracic. Clear. Thoracic. Cervical. Come out. There it comes. There it goes. Cervical. Come out. Cervical. Thoracic. Come out. Lumbar. Sacrum. Go. Sacrum. Go. Come on out. Go in Jesus' name. YouTubers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit the teaching button. You need to read a couple articles. One, how Satan controls the mind. Two, number two, Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 20, 48 hours of this service. You will be attacked. Okay, read that article so you know what's coming. You know how to fight back. You will be attacked within 48 hours. Do not go back to rituals, days, years, Sabbaths, new moons, old moons, other moons. Do not go back. Do not go back there. Don't go back to religion. Don't go back to rituals. You will end up in bondage. Do not do that. You are not a son or a daughter of the woman in bondage. You are a son or a daughter of the free woman. You are not going back to slavery. You are the son. You are the daughter of the free woman. 
Hear the word of the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's the Greek word sarx. It means fleshly. But they are mighty to God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Those strongholds are in your mind. The verse is talking about your mind. And casting down imaginations. They are in your mind. Strange, weird imaginations. Get rid of them. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's in your mind. Taking into captivity every thought. Thoughts are in your mind. You are not to the obedience of Christ. Every negative thought. In the name of Jesus, this week, you will take that thing captive and you will dominate that thought. You will crush that thought. Every lust thought you have, every homosexual thought, every lesbian thought, every thought of adultery, every thought that comes into your mind, you will take that thought captive. You will execute it on the spot. You will execute it on the spot. Every negative thought about yourself, criticizing yourself, seeing you as self-pity, seeing you as a self as a failure, you will take that thought captive. You will crush it. You will crush that thought this week. You will not live with negative thoughts about yourself because God does not have any negative thoughts about you. None. None. God never has a negative thought about you. He wants to help you. Mentally ill people do not take their thoughts captive so the demons run their minds. That's the crux of mental illness. They won't stop listening to demons. You've got to take each thought captive. If there are too many thoughts, you must write them down one at a time. Write them down. Every thought has to be executed. Every thought of being a loser and a failure. Every thought that God doesn't love you and he doesn't care. Every thought of how pitiful your life is and self-pity. Every thought. You take captive to the obedience of Christ. You kill it. You kill it. If you do it, the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to do it again. And then again. And then again. If you don't do it, He won't do anything. If you don't do anything, He won't do anything. If you don't do anything, God won't do anything. You must. Hear the word of the Lord. You must obey. You must obey. You must hear and obey. Get out of that thing right now. Glory to God. Honey, you've got a huge anointing on you right now. Huge. You just use it. You can have anything you want right now. Take it. Those are horrible demons. They're strong ones. And you got to have a huge anointing to get them out. And she has it. Take advantage of it. Go for the swing for the fences. The Holy Ghost is slaughtering the devil tonight. Almost every person that came to the altar got significant deliverance tonight. The people that did not get deliverance held back. You cannot hold back and get healed. You must be aggressive. You must be aggressive and push your way in. You must be pushy with the devil because he's pushy with you. You must hate him back. You have to hate him back. He hates your guts. 
And if you don't hate him, he will take advantage of you. You will not see him coming. Hate keeps a man alive. Thus saith the Lord, you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. And tonight, you rotten devil, we hate you tonight. We hate you tonight. I hate what you've done to me and my family. I hate what you've done to my mind and my health. I hate it. And I'm going to put on the full armor of God tonight. And I'm going to fight back. Yes, I am. You choose to fight back, you too. But listen to me. If you choose to fight back, the devil cannot stop you. He cannot stop you. He doesn't have that kind of power. If you choose to fight back, the Holy Ghost will help you. But you got to fight back hard. You got to push this thing. Push it. Push it. How do you push it? Just like this. You rotten devil, I hate your guts. Come out of me. Satan, I hate your works. I renounce them. Come out of me. Sin. I hate sin. I repent of sin. I command sin. Come out of me. There's no sin in your spirit, man. It's in your body. It's in your mind. Repent of it and cast it out. Come out. These signs, says the Lord, shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover, says the Lord. Come on. Step out in the word of God. YouTubers, put your hand on your body somewhere where the pain is. Put it in there. Come out. Put your hand on where your pain is. Come out. Put your hand on your head. You got bipolar. Bipolar. Hey. Bipolar. I curse you. Come out of my head. Right now I said, come out of my head. Stupidity. I curse you. Come out of my head. Stupid. Come out. The demon makes me think and act stupid. Come out. The demon that gives me same sex attraction. Come out. Come out, you lesbian. You homosexual pervert. Come out. Transgendered spirit. I bind your power. Come out. Every demon from religion, Judaism, Christadelphianism. Buddhism, Hinduism, every spirit of rituals from the Messianic synagogue, rituals, foods, seasons, Sabbaths, seasons, times, days, years, I renounce it all. All of this. I renounce all of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command you, Satan, get out! Come out of my stomach, you pervert, you adulterer. Come out right now. Every man you ever slept with, every woman you ever slept with, that pervert, come out! Adultery, come out! Oral sex, come out! Anal sex, come out! Come out of my intestines, come out of my ears, come out of my large intestine, come out of my stomach, come out now! You are stinking pervert, I bind your power! Bipolar, schizophrenia, psychosis, I curse you, come out! Sleep paralysis, fear demons, come out of my body! Sleep paralysis, come out now! Nightmares, bad dreams, come out now! Get out of there! Come out, you spirit of fear! Spirit of fear! Insecurity! Introversion! Low self esteem! Go, 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 go! Low self esteem, go! Fear of my future, come out of me! Doubt and unbelief, I curse you, come out! 
Doubt and unbelief, the worst sin of all is unbelief. Come out of me right now. Come out, you pervert. Every spirit of unbelief and doubt, I bind your power. Get out of my head. Come out of my body. Every demon that told me I can't get healed, I can't get delivered. Come out of my head. Right now, I said. Put your hand on your head. YouTubers, you got bipolar, schizophrenia, something like that. Put your hand on your head. Right on your forehead. They hide in your frontal lobe. The demons hide in your frontal lobe. Right in the front. If you have something wrong with your eyes, blurred vision, something like that, put your hand on the back of your head. The back of your head. Your eyes. If you have something wrong with your eyes, put your hand on the back of your head. Spirit, I command you. Come out of my brain. Come out of my vision center. Get out of the back of my head. Come out. Come on out. Bipolar, come out of my frontal lobe. I command every spirit in my brain. Go. Right now. Thus saith the Lord. Come out now. I command every coward spirit in my body. I am afraid to speak up, afraid to speak in public, afraid to speak out loud, afraid. I'll repent of it right now. Coward spirit. Coward spirit, I bind your power right now. You coward. Come out. Cancer. Hey, cancer. You come out of there. Uterine cancer. Come out. Cervix cancer. Come out. Stomach cancer. Come out. Irritable bowel syndrome. Every fear spirit in my bowels. Come out of my body. Autoimmune disease. Self hatred. Suicide. Self destruction. Autoimmune. Come out of me. Come out of me. Every skin disorder, anxiety, and fear demon. Come out of my body. Every skin disorder. Come out. Hurry up. Right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Satan, I'm telling you right now, I want you out at any cost. That's how you talk to him. Out at any cost, I said. Any cost. I renounce my own abilities in my own mind to heal myself. I renounce it. I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. I've had enough of me. I want him. I quit. I'm firing myself. Come on. Just pull a trump. You're fired. Pull a trump right now. You're fired. You're firing yourself. And you're receiving the new man. Jesus, the son of God. The new man. The son of God. Next Friday, I will be here for another healing and deliverance and teaching service. See you next time.